Hi everybody, I'm going to give a brief lesson today on how to create a sound file in the LEGO Mindstorm EV3 Home Edition software. I'm just going to launch the home software. The reason I'm doing this quick demonstration is because I'm going to be showing some lessons uh, that I've created on some videos over the next couple weeks and months. And one of the steps you're going to have to learn is how to create your own sound files. Uh, so this is going to be just a quick little lesson. You might already, you may already know how to do this, but uh, that's why I'm going to create this as its own self-contained lesson. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. So I've clicked on File, New Project. Now, once the project loads, I will show you which control you have to use in order to create a sound file. Okay. Um, I'm going to close this over here. Close the content editor. And if you look up here, this is just a standard program. Uh, I'm actually not even going to create this program so that I can load it on the robot. Uh, I'm not going to bother in this lesson. I'll just uh, I'll show that in the future on the uh, next lesson where we actually take some of these sound files and integrate them into the robot. So if you go down to your content editor, you'll see, sorry, if you go down to the programming uh, editor, you'll see that down below we've got the icons here that allow me to drag and drop onto the uh, desktop. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the sound object here and we're going to drop it into our playlist. And as you can see right now, this is uh, set to play a file by default. You can play a tone, you can play a note. Uh, I'm not really going to go into that. I'm just going to show you today how to play a file. So the file name should be up here and I'm going to show you how to create one in a second. There's the volume and this is a setting that will control whether or not the um, sound file is placed to its entirely completed or if it will just play once and then stop or if it'll repeat now the reason for doing this is sometimes you want the sound to be able to continue while other actions are done along your programming or other times you want it just to say uh, sound and then wait to do something uh, you'll see that this technique can vary in general I believe what I do is I usually play the sound but allow the robot to continue doing other things. But again, it's going to be up to your program and what you're using it for. So quickly, just to show you, there are some built-in sounds um, that come with the LEGO uh, software. And if you look at it, you could, uh, we'll, we'll show you later what project sounds are. Those are the ones you're going to create your own yourself. However, in the LEGO sound files, you can see that there's I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. There's different types of sound files. There's animals, and I'll play a couple. Cat purring. Dog barking. Dog growling. You kind of get the idea. Just go through and fool around with them yourself. There's some mechanical ones that you can use if you're doing something with your Mindstorm and you want it to sound, you know, like a real robot. Uh, there's also some audio in here. The numbers are all in here. Eight. Five, four, nine, one. Um, okay, so you get the idea, right? There's some sound files in here. So now, to create your own sound file, what you do is you go up to Select Tools, Select Tools and Sound Editor, okay? Now, here's the sound editor. I'm just going to go right into it and give you a demo. So the way that the sound editor works is I'm going to hit Record, and it's going to start recording. Don't worry too much about uh, making some noise when it starts recording because you will be able to pick out a certain um, length of your audio and, and, and kind of edit it and trim it. So I'm going to click on record and then I'm just going to say test, test, test and we'll see where we go from there, okay? Test, test, test. Now I hit the stop button. Okay, so as you can see, my test, test, test statements are kind of shown in here in the um, kind of the wave pattern. Now what you do is left click to select the area the beginning of the area and hold the left mouse button down then scroll over to right about here you can see that this is probably a little bit of noise i started talking a little bit after my recording so this is the area in which i want to play here's the play button now i can review to see what it sounds like so i'm gonna hit play now test 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 there you can hear test 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 now i've got that Sounds like a pretty reasonable set of uh, sounds that I want to record. So, or actually that I've already recorded that I want to now save. So when I click on the save button, it's going to prompt me for a name of the project. 
Here I'm typing test, test, test. Name for the sound in the project. Say OK. Now that is saved my sound file into my project. Um, the, the next thing I'll show you is how you actually record over an existing sound. All you really do is you just hit the record button again. It's going to clear out this cue, and then you're going to say another uh, phrase and then do the same process. So let's just quickly do that, okay? We've already saved. This one is test, test, test. Now I'm going to click record again, and it prompts me. It says recording will clear the current sound. Do you want to continue? Say okay. Hello there. Okay. So now I've done the same thing. I hit on record. It asked me if I want to overwrite. It said yes. Then I said hello there. Then I clicked on the stop button. Here's what I can do. I can listen to it again by selecting the area using the left click and then right click. Okay. You can also drag and drop as, it, as it's been saved. Okay. Now I can click play to see what it sounds like. Hello there. I don't really like that one. So let's do it again. Click on record. It's going to overwrite. Hello there. Okay. Oh, actually, you know, one of the things I might show is that you have a maximum length on your recording time here. So um, what you really have to do is let's just hit uh, record again. Okay. Let's just let it run the entire time here. It's running, 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 it's running. Okay. Record again. It looks like there's only eight seconds worth of saving that you can do. See, there seems to be a little bit of a bump in the middle there. There might be my processor on my laptop or something. But either way, as you can see, here's an entire file. I can I can select an area, hit play. It looks like there's only eight seconds worth of saving that you can do. Okay. Do the same thing. Pick this area. See, there seems to be a little bit of a bump in the middle there. There might be my... Okay, just for the sake of it, sake of it I'm going to save this one. Okay. Save this as... It says only eight. Okay. Click on OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. Okay. So now what happens is when I go up to my sound file name, I can click on it. And now you can see that it's added in the project sounds my one. One. Because I've used it actually. That's a, that's a little bit of a trick. Okay. If I get rid of test, one from test, there. Test. And now select this. You'll see that it's moved one up into my project files because I used it before. Okay, now if I pick this one. It looks like there's only eight seconds worth of saving that you can do. It The, the sound file plays exactly the way it's been recorded, you know. So basically that's all I really wanted to show you today. There's nothing else I can really think of except, okay, if you do want to show and play something more than eight seconds long, what you can do is you can just butt sound files together okay so if i wanted to add two together what i could do is drop another sound file up here sound object and maybe what can i do is i could put one, one here and then put test test test, test 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 and when i download this program it's going to and as a matter of fact that's why on here you would want to say wait for completion right and this one would wait for completion too and so what would happen is you would now be able to butt these, volume, these these sound files together and the robot would talk. If you find that when they're butted together, it goes from one into the other too quickly and it kind of overlaps, then what you can do is you can drop in a weight block in between the two. And then you can set the weight to be maybe 0.25 seconds. I've done this before. So now what will happen is when this program plays, It'll say one, and then it'll be a, a really, really minor pause, and then the word or the phrase test, test, test. So those are just a couple of little ways that you can kind of control um, putting some sound into your robot. I'm not going to say, like like I said, I'm not going to load this on the robot because this is pretty self-explanatory. But if you want to try that for yourself, now you know how to set your own sound files. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.